we drove up to Oregon, what, two weeks ago, and from Sacramento to Oregon, it was completely smoky the whole time. I thought that there was going to be some relief somewhere, and there wasn't. And it's just, this is the new norm. Driving through Mount Shasta was couldn't the, see the map was the most shocking thing. We uh, we actually pulled we pulled through the town because I love Mount Shasta and um, I wanted to show my wife a couple different places when we were in the car and the whole t- I the whole time I was looking up to the right and you couldn't see the mountain. And by the you way, you text me because I drove by first and you're like, "How's the mountain look?" And I'm like, "I, have I don't no know." Idea. Uh, by the way, is in that that drive coming back from Oregon, just north of Mount Shasta, is one of the most stunning sights you've ever seen, uh, because seeing the whatever the south facing or the north facing end of Mount Shasta is gorgeous. Coming from that area, it's like high desert up there, and so you can see it very clear. Couldn't see it. Did not see the mountain once, which is ju- it's just I've never seen that before. Never. The most shocking thing to me in that drive was driving over Bridge Bay Bridge and yeah. it just being. No, you're talking uh, well, Lakehead. Lakehead, Lakehead Bridge. Bridge. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And it just being like a puddle underneath. Like it's like it's it was unrecognizable from what I've seen before. And that really kind of goes into the next story that we were going to talk about. Low water levels allow kayakers to paddle through historic train tunnels on Shasta Lake. But. We're just, it's it, which was a cool story, right? This is a that's a cool positive story, but it really isn't, right? It all has to do with the massive drought that we're currently going. Yeah, so uh, going back to Lakehead, I mean, it's just like a creek through there, and um, there's actually if you, you look, can like jump across it, like it's like not even yeah. a creek. You know, it, it, if you look, if you're heading north, if you look to the left, there's the old Lakehead Bridge. I think it's called the Lakehead Bridge. That I've jumped off of a million times in the water. And and sometimes the water gets so high where it's like barely a jump. It's like, it's, but you know, as the water gets lower, it can kind of be like a high jump. On the, if you look to the right, there is a cliff that sits right next to a campsite where you can jump off into the water. Now, um, that cliff literally does not have, it has zero water under it. It's and just it, a cliff. And as you can like, if you come down the cliff, you probably have a good hundred yards till you get to any water, and it's just like a creek. It's that that is astounding. But back to uh, so the historic train tunnel. So this it's the old railroad tunnel that used to f- go by Kennett, California, which is the historic town under uh, the water of Lake Shasta, and the water has to be at a perfect level. Um. Because as the, the lake is essentially losing about a foot a day, which is pretty crazy. But so as it gets lower and lower and lower, then you can walk through the tunnel, but you can't kayak through it. So this is a very rare opportunity. You got to time it perfectly. You got to time it perfectly. And from you know what I saw, a, a lot of people did this over the last like two weeks or so. I don't know if you can do it anymore, but. Pretty cool. I mean, you you basic you 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 basically go through this like old structure, and then you go you can paddle through the tunnel onto the other side. Uh, really cool, you know. Look through history. It is one positive that we can take away from all the negatives. You know, like this is a this looks really cool, and it's there's a lot of his, history to it. This uh, this train tunnel was built in 1884. That was a hundred years before I was born, uh, and I'm pretty old. It, it just looks really cool. I would rather kayak it than walk through it personally. Um, I love the videos and, and all of the people posting. Um, it's just one of those things. I've never seen. How do you get to this area? So I, I actually don't know. I watched a lot of st- I, I know around where it is. And, and from I'm pretty sure you can pull up like basically a, like really close to it. Drop your kayak in and just, you know, come around. But if you we wanted to, like, rent kayaks somewhere on Shasta Lake, like, where do you think the closest place to rent them? I'm not e- I'm not even sure, to be honest. I would probably, you probably rent a kayak in town and Redding, um, like Headwaters Kayak. You can, you can rent it from there. And then, uh, go, but again, I, I just, I don't think you can do this anymore. I think. It's probably too low at this point. It's probably too yeah. low. Although, and. I, I don't know if I can ever remember a time when um, you could walk through it. 
Like, I don't think the lake has ever been that low in my entire life. I, when I was researching for us to talk about this, saw it and saw somebody walking through it. And I was like, oh, oh really? I didn't even know. Well, I mean, you can see in one of these pictures that it, you're able to walk in there at least. Oh, maybe not. There might be some water in there. But yeah. um, well, it's I've so- never seen anybody walk through it personally 2015 was the last time i remember like being this low and then before that i don't really remember any time through my childhood that it was this low um so this could be the lowest we've ever seen it it's not the lowest shasta lake's ever been but it's the lowest we've ever seen it there was a drought in the 70s where it probably got you know this low by the way lake orville is the lowest it's ever been and it is uh it is crazy how low lake orville is but um, it is a silver lining in all of this that we can see the history that is underwater. Um, uh, the town- it's pretty crazy how well it's held up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a hundred and f- almost a hundred and forty years old, and like once the water drops, it looks like it could totally function perfectly today as it did the day that it was put underwater. There's also an old highway like bridge that that comes through that you can see now that was buried. I um I I think that highway it was built in like the early 1900s and then obviously went underwater in 1945 when they built the dam. But there's a lot you can go out there and see right now um that is 99% of the time uh, covered in water. So it's an interesting time uh, here to see all this stuff. And hopefully this is not something we see a lot in the coming years, but we probably will. 